Oh, look what we have here. This is more than a mailbag today. Some of my favorite stuff has arrived. More Keithley equipment. I just ordered this from Test Equity a few days ago. And it's here. It's Friday. Let's get it open. Going to need a knife. Well, that's not really a knife. But we'll use it anyway. We have an accessories pouch, and in the accessories pouch, probes. So, anybody got an idea of what this is? There's not a lot of these units out yet. Um, it's around, but I don't think they're in very wide use, and I haven't seen much on YouTube about them. So, I thought I would pick one up. All right. Yep, got a Cal certificate here. Calibration date July 5th. 2018. It is a DAQ 6510. This is a six and a half digit meter based upon their uh, DMM 6500 series, which itself is derived from the uh, DMM uh, 7510. Uh, which I have on the bench, <clears throat> except that this also has, yes, slots, options for additional channels. This is a scanner card. This takes uh, scanner cards in, and you can have up to uh, 80 channels with this. So I've got a few plans for some multi-channel measuring and maybe we'll take a look at that. Now, as pretty as this is, what good would a DAC be without a few accessories? So naturally, I ordered some. Oh, that's a big, big one. All right. Oh, here we go. So 7700. This is the scanner card. We've got some software, some zip zip ties. Oh, that's interesting. And a uh, little screwdriver, uh, standard size for typical little uh, screw terminals. Oh, and the card. Here we go. Another nice Ziploc bag. We are on a an ESD ban, uh, bench mat. So this will just slide in to the back of the DAC. Let's open this up. Oh, is it like a quarter turn screw or something? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So this... Uh, lid opens up with just a single quarter turn and here we have it oh it's pretty here's our connector and 22 channels we have 20 regular channels that'll do up to one amp and up to i think it's 300 volts um i also do uh k-type and other thermocouple uh data acquisition and it can be used in two terminal or full uh, four wire Kelvin mode so you can go to uh, uh, 10 uh, sets of Kelvin measurements in various configurations and then there's a couple of additional high temperature uh, here or high sorry high amperage down here channels 21 and 22 are um, three amp capable uh, channels so that'll be nice for some of my slightly higher current measurements. Nice. Oh yeah, smells like new electronics. Just wonderful. Can't wait to put this to use. Now, that's not the only thing in the accessory box. I don't, at least I think there's something more. Ah. 
KTTI TSP. This is the TSP Link card and digital I.O. card. So this does not take up one of the uh, measurement slots in the back. This goes in a separate communications uh, slot, and it's got a little, uh, oh, what do you call it, DB9, mail to mail, depending on what kind of cable you have. And there it is. There's our card. Let's get that out. All right. This is the TSP link. Got a lot of reflective stuff down there. So it has uh, two connections for in and out. You can loop through. It doesn't really matter which which goes on there. But the various uh, high end higher end Keefley uh, units, like the um, source measure units and the DMM seventy five ten, have TSP link, and that's an proprietary protocol um, that includes not only commu uh, full duplex communication through a uh, bus, but it also has, as I recall, trigger wire, trigger lines in here as well. And it's a, what it does is it allows one meter to control another meter or other devices. So, uh, and if you've seen some of my other ones, I had a one uh, source measure unit controlling a meter. And so we can do the same thing with this. And that means I can have one program on, um, say, one of the source measure units, control the other source measure unit, control the DAC, control the DMM7510, all with one program and coordinate the data. So it's a nice little card. And then it has the digital I.O. connection, <coughs> which we can look at. There's the connector. It has six I.O. pins and a, uh, it's got a flyback diode in there so you can use it to uh, drive a relay as long as it doesn't use more than a few hundred milliamps. It, it provides ground and five volts um, at up to half an amp. And the interesting thing is this is exactly the same as the digital I.O. pin or connector on the back of the uh, DS, uh, the uh, Keithley 2280S power supply that I have, and I've already built a breakout box for that, so I can use the same breakout box, and I think it's the same on the uh, 60, the DMM, uh, the other DMM, and probably the uh, source measure units. So uh, these are really handy for triggering something from the device, from the power supply, or in this case, I used a, uh, the output of a, I was using the output of a small, uh, very low power board to trigger the 2280 to capture the power consumption at a at very high speed. All right, before plugging it in, let's take a look at some of the physical characteristics of this meter. Um, first off, the front panel is a little bit different than this DMM7510. We have a soft power button right here with a little power light, which is definitely different than the uh, hard power switch. The USB is horizontal. That's definitely different. Um, and here we have the old school uh, front panel fuse that uh, Keithley had on their older meters uh, for the uh, current range. And all you have to do to replace that fuse, you don't have to take this thing uh, out of your setup and uh, unstack the gear. You just press down on the on the uh, banana jack there, rotate it, and it pops out. And you get, oops, a little glass fuse. And there's nothing special about this. I think it's a standard 3 amp, uh, 250 volt. Uh, whatever style fuse, and all you do is slide it into the connector, or the banana, sorry, you slide it into the front panel jack, then slip it in, there we go, and rot press and rotate, and it's back in place. Very handy rather than having to go to the rear panel for uh, me since I have all this stuff racked up. Um, 
And this is in a little bit of contrast to the, say, the DMM 7510, which is a very, you know, very new meter. Um, the 7510 has a jog knob here. That's different. Uh, we have a physical hard switch right here for the power, the vertical uh, USB, and then the uh, standard type that you would see on really most brands of meter, uh, regular banana jacks, no front panel fuse capability. But that is how it used to be because here down here on the old uh, 2015 THD, we again have the uh, front panel fuse. Just kind of interesting that they uh, switched that out. Now size-wise, this is a fairly big meter. Um, it comes in at about 15 and a quarter inches. That's what, a little under 400 millimeters, 390 millimeters probably. And you compare that to the uh, 7510, which is uh, about s almost 17 inches. It's about 425 millimeters. So that's pretty, now 7510 is a pretty big meter. Um, let's compare, though, this uh, 6510 to something like uh, a fairly common Agilent uh, 344-61A. Now, there's a size difference. Um, the uh, 61A is not quite 12 inches long or about 300 millimeters. So that means this is quite a bit longer, 90 millimeters longer or deeper on the bench. So I definitely have to make sure... Um, this one goes in under something shorter, right, to stack properly. You may notice that this does not have a handle like the more common bench meter um, or even the DMM7510, which has a uh, tilting bale, as the term is for that. Um, but then... This is a DAC. It's not designed to be carried around. You're probably going to be setting this thing up and leaving it in place. It does, however, have a couple of little flip-up feet. They seem, well, they, they feel a bit flimsy. It's actually fine. There's probably more wiggle in my bench than this. So they, they aren't astoundingly beautiful, well-engineered feet, but they do the job just fine. Since this has a soft power button, let's see how long it takes to boot up. Ready? It takes a little while still. All right. So it took about, uh, I think that was 15 seconds or 16 seconds to get fully booted up. Uh, not bad. I wonder how that rates compared to the uh, 7510. Hmm. Well, I can't really start both meters and the timer at the same time, but I'll start the meters together and we'll see how fast I can get to the timer. All right, the 7510 came up in about 10 seconds. And there we go, at the 15 mark, plus probably another second for this. So about 15 or 16 seconds for this to start up, and about oh, 10 or 11 for the uh, 7510. So the soft power button didn't actually make it any faster. That's interesting. All right, since it's a meter, let's, let's take some measurements. Uh, here we have a simple setup with the uh, DAQ on the left. We have a source meter here in the center to provide the voltage. And over here we have a DMM7510. The source meter is set up uh, at 10 volts, and it's, it says that it is reading back uh, a nice uh, 9.999, so off by 100 millivolts, but that's its 
that's what it's or 100 uh sorry microvolts but anyway that's what it's set to all right the readings are very close here we have the uh, daq 6510 and up here the dmm 7510 and this meter is a little past its calibration date probably by a year out uh, from when it should be because they're on a two-year cycle and I think I've had this about three years now um, but still very accurate they're very close well, there you have it a quick intro to my new piece of bench gear there will be a lot more coming with this meter uh, as it has a lot of capabilities with that uh, scanning card that I can do